Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, BSF Canada, and Syngenta Canada. Werner Tobin here, back at uh, Southwest Diagnostic Days, Ridgetown College, University of Guelph, catching over the mafropathologist, Albert Tunera. Albert, how's it going? It is going great. How about you, man? I'm great. I'm a big crowd out here today, and lots of questions. And one of the questions you've been trying to answer here is how do you identify different fungal seedling diseases yeah. in soybeans? You've got a great chart here. Take us through it. How, how do we know the difference? Yeah, and, and those calls come in, uh, oh, they come in batches in many cases, and a lot of it's based on the environment, right? If it's too dry, too wet, or even better, if it's dry, wet, dry, wet, those dry, wet cycles really promote the number of different root rot diseases, and we're seeing that right now. We're getting those calls, and we see that here in this uh, plot here at, at Ridgetown as well. So when it comes to those, you know, trying to identify or what are the main players in Ontario when it comes to soybean root rots, we've got four, and you can see here, Arpithium, Phytophthora root rots, we know those. Those are those heavier clay soils are most prone to those. Really saturated soils, heavy rain events like we just had. Our, our key um, environments where we'll see more calls or more uh, injury in those. Rhizoctonia fusarium, fungal pathogens, those ones give us more of a, a dry rot, a leathery rot to it. And, you know, first thing you can do is color with rhizoctonia. We start seeing red lesions, cankers um, at the stem line. Fusarium, we get a discoloration, a brown discoloration. We can get vascular discoloration. You cut those, um, the top roots, and you'll see that, that fungal infection or browning inside there as well. Um, they're really dry rots. Pythiums and phytophthora will give you that wet rot. And, and so, you know, just by digging them up, you can really get it down to Fusarium, Rhizoc, Phytophthora, Pythium, just based on the texture and how they disintegrate in your hand, and if they do. Now, you've identified fungal diseases in your field. Obviously, we were, we're looking for some answers on how to control that and how to, how to maintain and then support your soybean crop. What are the things that you can rely on here? I mean, you always talk about crop rotation. Crop rotation, and this is a great example here where we've got um, soybeans showing the most um, root rot here is in the soybean wheat rotation as well as the continuous soybeans. And then with the corn in the rotation, both from a, a corn soybean or corn soybean wheat rotation, we still have a little bit, but not as much. And part of that too is probably that residual and early on to establish the, the root systems. The quicker that root system's established, the, the more they can escape some of that infection or maybe not show um, as much impact when we have these rain events, for instance. And then there's seed treatments. Now you've done a lot of work and you're doing a lot of work right here on testing seed treatments, where do they fit? Yeah, so we do a lot of work on seed treatments, particularly with uh, Agriculture, Agri-Food Canada on the Phytophthora side as well. And so seed treatments are important. Why are they so important is that they have, in many cases, broad spectrum, uh, control against many different fungal pathogens and that both seed borne, soil borne. So that early establishment of those um, plants, you know, so we, you know, we always think about um, seed establishment and uh, emergence, right? But those benefits of seed treatment go beyond that. When we start thinking about root health and the ability to compensate for stresses, a healthier root system can compensate later. So I like to say that, sure, the, maybe the first two, three weeks, we'll see the greatest visual impact when it comes to uh, seed treatments in terms of emergence and stand establishment, but those benefits go way beyond that. Yeah. And finally, a big piece of the equation here is genetics and varietal decisions and varietal choices. Yeah, so when we talk about soybeans and we talk about these four um, root rots or seedling diseases, you know, um, you know, Variety selection, hybrid selection, genetics is our cornerstone when it comes to disease management. This is one of those groups of um, pathogens that aren't controlled as well by that. Why? Because Pythium, Rhizo Pythium, Rhizoctonia, Fusarium, we don't have or don't know 
what the varieties have in terms of tolerance or resistance genes. We have some indication, but again, nothing that's available to the grower for that. Phytophthora is our great example. There we've got race-specific resistance genes, those RPS genes you see in um, the, 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 the seed company uh, catalogs in that, so RPS 1C, 1K, all of those that still have effective. If you see something like RPS 1A, it's no longer effective in Ontario. So, and that's the other thing. We got different um, pathotypes or strains of the, these different uh, um, pathogens as well. So, and then we've got field tolerance when it comes to Phytophthora as well. So when we look at these four, we can knock these three out when it comes to variety selection. So seed treatment, crop rotation, eliminating um, tiling, etc., can help that side. On the Phytophthora, that's where the seed uh, genetics come in. Super insights, Albert. Always great to have you on the Soybean School. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you very much. Take care.